So there's been a lot of videos on YouTube lately about the Taurus acquisition, uh, the lawsuit that's being filed. Not really lawsuit, but under investigation uh, for Taurus acquisition. And a lot of shareholders are freaking out. And I thought I'd make a video on this because I it, it could get it could rake in the views. <laughs> and honestly, I make videos because you know people watch them. And as long as people watch my videos, I will continue to make videos. And highly, and a lot of there's a lot of people who hold stock in Torres Acquisition Corp. Me personally, I have zero position in Torres Acquisition. I wish I had, I wish I bought some stock. Um, when they had this correction here, I I should have bought some stock, but I was ignoring it, and the stock took off. Uh, I should have bought some when I saw the stock took off. But I did, and I'm, I'm missing out, but am I going to buy up here? No, absolutely not. Could it go up higher? Absolutely. Anything is possible in the market, but let's just, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I really think that Tourist Acquisition Corp, uh, Hylion, is overvalued because at $10, the company is evaluated at $1.5 billion. At twenty dollars, it's evaluated at three billion dollars. At thirty dollars, four point five, and at forty dollars, six billion dollars. That's quite a bit of money for a company. I mean, I get it. Nikola is, you know, fifteen or sixteen billion dollars, and you know, oh, why not uh, Hylion? Why can't Hylion be the Nic the next Nikola? It could. It absolutely could. It all depends on big money at the end of the day. If big money wants to keep pushing up highly on stock, they will. And for, you know, all the people who are holding stock, I sure hope they do. I, I sure hope big money comes in and pushes this stock to $100. Will it happen? I don't know. But I do hope so because I hope everyone makes a lot of money. Because I always like to see people when they make money... I just don't know if it will happen. I, you know, I can't say you can't guarantee you anything, but it, the the stock looks bullish right now, and you know the the company is solid and there's strong fundamentals and they're a very disruptive company when it comes to trucking. So yeah, I think it has a lot of potential. But if we look at a company called Dana. You know, I think it De Dana. Dana. Okay, there you go. So yeah, Dana. They're already making like a billion or two, roughly between one to two billion dollars per quarter, uh, and they are you know somewhat profitable. I think uh, EBITDA positive of two hundred ninety three million dollars in twenty nineteen. Uh, five hundred and ninety million dollars in twenty eighteen. Uh, they make roughly eight billion dollars annually, and they are valued at two billion dollars. So, Halion is valued at how much? Uh, right now it's valued at almost six billion dollars. So, I I would. It's hard for me to say that this is not overvalued, but in theory it is because they're not really generating the profits right now. Yeah, they will generate money. Will they generate $8 billion of revenue? Maybe one day in the future. Will they generate billion dollars of profit? I don't know. I, I That's why I, I simply don't know. I just think that this company is overhyped. That's my honest opinion. It's overhyped. It's... The valuation is for years and years and years of growth already priced into the stock. Could it, could it, like, it could still be a Nikola Motors at the end of the day. It could be the next Nikola Motors. I'm not telling you to sell, but if I, if I held onto the stock and I was up $40, I'd take my profit. That's just me though. And, you know, I'm not you. And you can do what you want, and this is just my opinion, but I think that it's it's overvalued right now. But it could still go up higher. Uh, right now, I think because of the tight share, uh, the tight float structure on the on Hylia, uh, on Shell, the 
uh, big money is manipulating the stock price to the upside. And then once the merger comes in, and once the once all those shares become availably tradable, once the merger between Hylion and Taurus acquisition is completed, there's going to be a lot more shares. And then the short sellers can come in, and they can start manipulating the stock price to the downside. Just saying, not 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 hundred percent sure that will happen. I'm just saying, you know, don't be too greedy. Pigs get slaughtered, bulls, no, so, you know, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. So, it, it, if you're not taking your profit, just be, just, just be warned. One day, you could see all that profit disappear, and you're gonna bitch and cr uh, cry about it, because you're like, I, I was a long-term investor in this stock, I believed in this company, and then the, the stock price is that, Twenty dollars, ten dollars. I don't know at the end of the day what's going to be trading at in the future, but I'm just saying that one day the bubble is going to pop and the stock is going to be, it's going to run down. But again, that's just my opinion. Like, I, I, I honestly think that this is this this investigation is like basically stupid. So yeah, well, let's just look at Nikola, right? Like, Hylion could do the same thing as Nikola. It, uh, the merger can go through, the stock can get pumped, and then it can crash all the way down to, you know, $30 or $40 again. That's a big possibility. That's what I'm saying. It's a big possibility. I'm not saying it'll happen. I'm saying that's a big possibility. Uh, if we look at Diamond Peak Holdings, the same thing happened. Shareholder uh, Westside Law LLP inv investigate Diamond Peak Holdings two days ago, but the stock still ran, right? It, it ran, you know, two days ago would be uh, Wednesday, and it ran all the way up to, what, $20, $20 before pulling back because, you know, it was overbought. So would, does this investigation mean anything? No, it doesn't. It really doesn't mean anything, at least in my opinion anyways. And a lot of YouTubers are saying the same thing. And I agree with them. I, I really don't think it means anything. Uh, Hennessy Capital also had uh, one too. Uh, they had, you know, 10 days ago, they had a uh, Wealth, uh, Wealth Law LLP investigation on Hennessy. No. And 10 days ago, the stock was trading at 1040. Now it's trading at 1085. So, I mean, does that the, any of that stuff matters? Not, not really. LCA also had one two two days ago. Uh, two days ago, the stock was, I guess it was at all time highs, and then it pulled back. But I don't know. Do what you want, but I'm just saying that these kind of things happen in the market all the time, and uh, you just no. I maybe it's there to scare retail investors. Maybe I don't know at the end of the day. So now let's talk a little bit of an update on Solo. This is a company I still hold. I'm really disappointed in management. They are not, you know, we are in an EV bubble, people. We are in an EV bubble, and they are not taking advantage of this EV bubble. The CFO was hyping up the production. Production comes out, stock goes up a little bit, and because of the poor PR, the stock sold off. And that's just the reality of it. I can't control the market. That's just the way the market works sometimes. The thing is, is is Solo buy a buy at $2.80? I don't know. I, I, I honestly want this thing to go all the way down to $2. Because I think at $2, it becomes a very attractive buy. It, it becomes a very good risk to reward scenario. Because... At two dollars, the the market cap is essentially the same value as the stock price. I mean, oh, that's it's half of the stock price. The, the the amount of cash the company has is half the stock price, and that's the reality of it. Uh, right now, I mean, Electromet is a company that runs on news, and the company refuses to release any proper news on their pre-orders 
or their production. And that's the two things shareholders want to hear. And they're not releasing that information. And the stock is selling off. And that's just the reality of it. And I think, you know, this is just my opinion. But I think that the stock could sell off even further. I could be wrong. I don't know at the end of the day. But that's just my opinion. Uh, what could pump the stock is if, let's say, if like, Electromat comes out with some kind of news saying, Oh, we signed on with, you know, uh, Uber Eats or DHL wants to buy 5,000 of their cars from us. Or 7-Eleven wants to buy 10,000 cars. Or, you know, so, like, if they could sign on some businesses to buy the, uh, the, to buy the, the solo cars because of, you know, deliveries and advertisement, you know, then I think solo stock could skyrocket. If some if somebody came out and they they wanted to buy ten thousand cars from Solo, from Electroma, like a contract, Electroma stock will blow up. It's that simple. That's what I think would happen. So and I and I also believe that Electroma. A lot of people don't don't believe that Electroma will be able to sell in America. I think they will. I think they will be able to sell some cars. I mean, not everyone's going to want to buy an Electromat solo, but there's going to be people out there that will. There's so many people in this world and almost everyone can drive. And I'm sure, and most people drive alone anyways. And I'm so the convenient fact of having a second passenger seat is good, but you know, they didn't design the car for that. And that's the reality of it right now. So. It's kind of like a one, it's a one seater, but I still think it'll be able to sell. That's just my opinion. Like, Arkhamoto, it has two seater, but then, you know, there's also the disadvantage of if it rains or if there's winter outside, you can't really drive it because uh, it has no doors. It has no windows. It's like an open vehicle. You just hop in, drive. Uh, Solo is an enclosed space, so if it rains heavy, you, you still can drive if it, snows you can still drive because it's enclosed and there's heaters while Arkhamoto yes they have two seaters they are a little bit more expensive but if you know if solo fails then I would say Arkhamoto is going to fail too it's that simple a solo and Arkhamoto is in the same category if if one company fails they will both fail it's that simple in my opinion is Arkhamoto Arkhamoto you know, I like it's expensive twenty thousand for a motor a motorcycle type vehicle, but according to the Arkhamoto investor presentation, Har Harvey D Harvey sells two hundred and fifty thousand motorcycles each year. Each year, that's a lot of motorcycles. So could Solo sell two hundred fifty thousand cars each year? I think so. I think that if, if you combine the business and the consumer, I think they could sell 250,000 cars per year. But they're not even producing that much. They're only producing 20,000 cars. So the, the risk factor for Solo is very low because they'll be able to sell every vehicle they produce for now anyways. And the company really needs to flip a profit before you know the, the company stock will get rewarded. But, you know, that's my opinion. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for future updates and have a great day. Bye.